So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the, like, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Right, I tell you, they're champs now. Let's have a look at the champion. The champion of thin and light gaming laptops, the Zeus ROG Zephyrus. It is SGX502. Now, when it comes to gaming, and I'm just talking about gaming, not as an all-round laptop, battery life, just daily driver sort of stuff. But if we're just talking about pure gaming performance in thin and light premium laptops, I think this one's the king. I haven't reviewed the Alienware. That is coming. I may change my mind then, but certainly in terms of gaming laptops, it doesn't get much better in the thin and premium category. I mean, this is thinner, lighter, faster than the older model. This one here comes at i7-9750H, 6-core processor, RTX 2070 Max-Q. And to give you an idea of the power of this and why I think it's the best gaming for just pure gaming in this category, is because the benchmarks I was getting with this, with an RTX 2070 Max-Q, were as fast as and even faster than the Razer with a 2080 Max-Q. Sometimes it was slower, of course. You know, RTX 2070 versus 2080 should be but there were some games where it was faster than the Razer that had an RTX 2080 it's just a powerhouse and it also has probably one of the best gaming displays 240 hertz 3 millisecond response and G-Sync and it is one of the better looking displays it's top class in that regard now if you're talking all round now maybe the Aero maybe the Razer but if we're just talking gaming you're going to be blown away by this now there is a downside to that raw pure speed and it is loud AF now of course you can put it in silent mode you get you 20 25 some games maybe 30 percent haircut in performance but in silent mode i'm still happy with the performance of this still getting up you know around 100 frames per second even in battlefield in silent mode and that was high settings yes yeah, sure you'll get another 20 30 frames if you put it in full gaming mode or turbo mode i would rather have it in silent mode take that little bit of haircut and basically in silent mode it's performing you know like some other laptops in full gaming mode Amazing gaming performance with this best in class sort of display there with the G-Sync. You know, has everything you need, has Ethernet, unlike the Razer, and also has audio in and out, which I do like. Of course, it's got the USB Type A's and it has USB C, but no Thunderbolt 3. So I've got the ZenBook Duo and that has Thunderbolt 3. I don't know why they're dropping a the Thunderbolt 3. It's a strange one because maybe they think, well, the graphics is so powerful, you're never going to use an eGPU. But what about my dock? My Thunderbolt 3 dock. It's useless. Can't use it on this. I want an Elgato Thunderbolt 3 dock. It's not going to work. Something to think about, Azus there. Please put the Thunderbolt 3 back. Other than that, it's absolute perfection in terms of gaming, thin and light, premium. They fixed the ergonomics of having the keyboard right at the bottom of the deck there and put it in a normal position and put the trackpad in a normal position. I like that a lot better than the previous Zephyrus. Check out the gaming benchmarks here and you can see my live gameplay. Doesn't get better than this in the thin and premium. So I think it is the best one so far in terms of gaming performance. You don't really need to undervolt it. If you undervolt it, that clock will stay at the 4 gigahertz the whole time, minus 100 millivolts. And the only time it will reduce from 4 gigahertz is like like playing Battlefield. I think I seen like 3.7 was the lowest I seen that CPU. And even sometimes it wouldn't even reduce. It would stay up to 4 gigahertz. So amazing game performance, 230 watt package, awesome parts in here, awesome gaming package. You're going to love this for gaming. I'll catch you in the next one. Watch my live gameplay. Tally ho. All right, so I've been playing this long enough just to get that temperature right up. So now you can see it's around 3.7 gigahertz. Oh, just nearly 3.8 gigahertz, so yeah, not much a drop on the CPU. And have a look at that, 1650 on the GPU. Ah, this is this is smoking, it's hammering. Now you can see there, getting around 120, ah, you know, in between 110, 130 frames per second. And you can hear it. It is loud. You can probably hear my dog too. <laughs> um, all right, so let's put it in silent mode, see what kind of haircut we get. Press the magic button, the magic button up there, and we'll turn it to silent mode. So it's got a dedicated button for this, and we'll go, it was in turbo mode, by the way. And let's put it on silent. So now I'm gaming with it. It's complete. Listen. I can barely hear the fans. 
barely hear it. Can you hear it? Wow, this silent gaming is awesome. You can put this on silent. You're still getting good performance. I'm getting 90 frames per second. I love it. Woo! This is the shit. No, that's good. I like it. Um, yeah, this thing is the king of thinner light gaming laptops. It is. Has the best performance. I mean, have a look at that. Over 100 frames per second. This is a 1080p high. And you can see the clock there slightly reducing um, to about 3.7. Now, this is not under voltage. Now, I just recently done a gaming review on a razor blade. And they were the same sort of clocks I was getting, actually. This is still a bit higher, because it's 3.7, 3.8. And that was undervolted by minus 100 millivolts. Now look at the GPU clock, too. Super high as well. 1600. So, and 100 frames. Woo! That's what you want, baby. Let's see where the 1% lows are. Uh, let's bring that up. All right, so that should be next to the frames per second there doesn't get any better than this. I mean, it's one of the only ones that can maintain a higher clock like this in Battlefield. Now, I'm going to undervolt it in a sec, and you'll see that it maintains 4 gigahertz the whole time once you undervolt it by the minus 100 millivolt, which Razer done out of the box, and that couldn't maintain, say, for example, 4 gigahertz. So, you know, the Aero does this too. If you undervolt the Aero, it will maintain that 4 gigahertz. But I still think this has a bit better thermal capacity than, say, the Aero. Certainly the benchmarks suggest so. Um, the Aero is, you know, this, the Aero is more like an all-round sort of laptop. It's an awesome laptop for, you know, everything else as well as gaming, like content creation, just as a daily driver, etc. Whereas this one's not the best as a daily driver, because the way it opens up at the back, it's not comfortable sort of on the lap, and you know, it's got G-Sync, which makes it, you know, it sets it apart from a lot of the gaming laptops. Having G-Sync makes it, you know, super connected feeling with that 240Hz monitor, and G-Sync is just amazing, so... Uh, it just makes gaming even that much more better. But G-Sync does reduce the battery life 